The Ukrainian aviation expert Valery Romanenko in an interview with RBC Ukraine stated that the JASSM missiles, which the United States may provide to Ukraine for the F-16, could reach Moscow or destroy the Crimean Bridge. According to Romanenko, JASSM differs from ATACMS. While ATACMS are ballistic missiles, JASSM are cruise missiles with a completely different design and principle of operation. He noted that JASM is more similar to the British Storm Shadow missiles. JASM missiles are an analogue to the Storm Shadow. However, the F-16 cannot carry the Storm Shadow but can carry two JASM missiles. They have similar components and the same warhead. But the JASM has a longer range, reaching 370 kilometers for the regular JASM version and up to 900 kilometers for the extended range version. Romanenko explained. In his opinion, the U.S. may provide Ukraine with JASM missiles of regular modification as the Americans understand that we are itching to strike Moscow or targets in Russia's rear. Romanenko pointed out that JASM missiles have systems similar to Storm Shadow, which minimally rely on satellite navigation. If the missile detects interference, it switches to terrain-following mode, comparing the landscape with a computer map to adjust its trajectory. He explained that ballistic missiles can use a purely inertial system, such as ATACMS, which doesn't have GPS. However, JASM missiles need to hit a specific target, so they have a territory correction system. At the final stage, they have a terminal guidance system, allowing for accuracy within 3 to 5 meters. If we receive them with a warhead similar to Taurus or Storm Shadow, then the Crimean Bridge will be a likely target. But if we get them with a cluster warhead, then airfields in Crimea will see frequent explosions, the expert emphasized. JASM missiles are developed by Lockheed Martin, an American company also known for producing the F-35 fighters. The JASM development program was launched in 1995 after the AGM-137 TSSAM project was cancelled due to its high cost. The goal was to create a stealthy, long-range, high-precision missile capable of attacking without entering enemy air defense zones and at a much lower cost than TSSAM. In 2003, ground tests of the missile were completed. However, the first flight tests failed due to problems with the engine and launch device. The missile was finally approved for military use on B-52 aircraft in October 2003. It was later integrated into strike aircraft like the F-16 and F-35. These missiles are available to a limited number of US allies including Poland, Australia and Finland. However, Japan and the Netherlands have signed contracts for JASM purchases and Germany, Greece, Romania and Denmark are also in negotiations. JASM was first used during missile strikes on Syria on April the 14th, 2018 during the Syrian civil war. Two B-1 Lancer bombers launched 19 JASM missiles at three Syrian government targets. In 2019, the missiles were used during the raid in Barisha to capture or kill the then leader of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The brazen invasion of the Ukrainian armed forces into Russia's Kursk region is being called a fatal blow to Putin's long rule in Ukraine. The Times writes, recalling the sinking of the Russian nuclear submarine Kursk exactly 24 years ago during the dictator's first year in power. It is noted that Ukraine's operation in Russia made Putin the first Russian leader since World War II to cede territory to a foreign army. The timing of the Ukrainian offensive is also ominous for Putin. In Russia, August has historically been a month of catastrophe and upheaval, beginning with the failed 1991 coup against Mikhail Gorbachev by KGB hardliners. Since then, in addition to the Kursk submarine disaster, August has seen major terrorist attacks, natural disasters and a devastating financial crisis. With more than two weeks to go, Putin must be wondering whether he will become the latest victim of the August curse, the article says. However, it is claimed that some analysts believe that Russians may believe that Putin was right when he argued that war was necessary to prevent a preemptive attack by Kyiv and its NATO allies. Also, Alexander Gabuev, head of the Carnegie Russia Eurasia think tank, said, while the Ukrainian invasion is a humiliation for Putin, it is unlikely to have any long-term consequences for his stay in power unless the situation worsens.
At the same time, the publication indicates that if Ukraine is able to seize the Kursk region, it will most likely try to exchange part of the captured lands for territories under Russian control. However, Putin does not seem to be in the mood for discussions with Kiev. Moreover, as noted, although the outcome of the Ukrainian offensive is still unclear, it is almost certain that the dictator has already begun planning his revenge.